Hello there, I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now back in the day, the power that came out of your USB port was really quite simple. It was running at five volts, it gave out 0.5 amps, which means it gave you 2.5 watts of power, and that was that. However, things have moved on significantly since then, especially once you include USB power delivery. So the question for us today is, what is USB power delivery and how does it work? Well, let me explain. Okay, first of all, let's get some terminology out of the way. When we're talking about power, what we're talking about is watts, and you calculate the watts by multiplying the amps by the voltage. So as I said just a few moments ago, USB originally was five volts at 0.5 amps. So five times by 0.5, half of five is 2.5 watts. Now the idea behind USB power delivery is a system where you can get up to 100 watts. So up from 2.5, 100 watts through a USB port. Now, before we get into the details of USB power delivery, let's look at all the different standards that come with USB and how much power each different standard allows a port to supply. So starting with USB 2.0, 5 volts, 0.5 amps, 500 milliamps, which gave you 2.5 watts of power. Now, when USB 3 came along, that 5 volts remained the same, but it could actually provide up to 900, 0.9 amps of power, which would give you 4.5 watts. There's also a standard called the USB battery charging standard, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Now, with USB battery charging, it's 5 volts at 1.5 amps, which gives you 7.5 watts of power. And then if you've got a USB type C cable just connected to a USB three port, then you can get five, amp, five volts at three amps, giving you 15 watts of power. But if you have a USB type C cable connected to a USB power delivery system, then you can get up to 20 volts at five amps, which gives you 100 watts. Now the key thing here to remember about power delivery is that it's the only one that changes the voltage level. All of them, including the battery charging standard, still remain at five volts. Okay, and then, but power delivery can actually up that up to 20 volts. Now, just mentioning quickly about the power uh, battery charging standard, that was basically a, a system that only works with chargers. It doesn't work on computers, it only works on chargers. And by shorting the data pins together, because you can't transfer data over it, the uh, device that was charging could speak to it and realize that this is a battery charging compliant charger, and therefore it could deliver up to 7.5 watts. Now, all USB type C cables are three amp compliant. Now, the important thing to know about power delivery is it only works over true USB type C cables. That means you've got a USB type C oval plug at one end and the USB type C oval plug at the other end. Now, if you've got a cable with a type A at one end and a type C at the other end, that cannot be used for USB power delivery. And the reason for that is because USB power delivery actually uses some extra pins in USB Type-C to negotiate the power level. So what happens is when you do have Type-A at one end and Type-C at the other end, there are some resistors in the uh, plugs which tell the devices what type of cable this is. Now in the past, there's been a problem that people, uh, companies have been putting the wrong resistors in there. And the result has been that although the cable itself can support three amps, what happens is when you plug that into a device, let's say like your PC into the motherboard, and then you've got a phone at the other end that wants three amps, it can actually say, oh, this is a three amp cable, and it actually requires Request that three amps from your motherboard. Now remember, of course, USB, normal USB is only up to, even on USB type three, is up to only 0.9 amps. And that can actually cause your motherboard or your charger to overload. That's why it's important that these cables stick to the default power resistor configurations on them. Now, as I mentioned, what happens with USB type C is there's these extra pins called the control pins that actually they talk to each other and through these pins, they're separate than the data pins, separate than the power pins, separate than the video pins. They are there just to, for control. And what happens is the two devices, when they've both got USB type C, can talk to each other and say, hey, I want this amount of voltage, I want this amount of uh, current, and then they negotiate what they want. Now, up until 45 watts, even up to 60 watts, you, a three amp cable is absolutely fine. Now, if you're using something bigger than that, then you're gonna have to go up to a five amp cable. But anything from 45, 60 watts in, my, in some cases, will be able to use that uh, three amp cable. And of course, here we're talking about powering laptops, we're talking about powering monitors, we're talking about powering things more than just your smartphone. Now, the original Pixel used a USB power delivery, and I did a test 
uh, just for this video, uh, just to confirm that power delivery worked very, very well, and that it was able to charge the battery from zero up to 100% in just 97 minutes, just over an hour and a half, which is great for a full charge. But again, that only works if you've got a USB uh, power delivery compliant charger and you're using a USB-C cable with those USB-C plugs at both ends. Now finally, at the end, it's worth talking about Qualcomm's Quick Charge. Qualcomm's Quick Charge uh, had a similar idea going on. It was able to up the voltage more than five volts. It could go up to nine and 12 and so on. And that was able to provide charge for phones. Now, of course, what's actually happened is that that technically breaks the USB specification. You're not technically allowed to do that. And in fact, Google make a statement about this in their Android compliancy document about what is a compliant Android phone or not. Let me read it to you. We strongly recommend to not support proprietary charging methods that modify the uh, voltage bus beyond default levels or alter sync source roles as such may result in interoperability issues with the chargers or devices that support the standard USB power delivery methods. While this is called out as strongly recommended, in future Android versions we might require all Type-C devices to support full interoperability with standard Type-C chargers. So Google are basically trying to say, if you want to be called an Android phone, you have to support USB power delivery. And that's of course what they've done with their Pixel devices. Now at the moment, it's still strongly recommended, which is kind of their strongest language they could use without actually saying this is an actual requirement. Now that wording can be found in the, in the Android 7 uh, compliancy documents. It can also be found in the Android 8 compliancy documents. So as of yet, Google haven't forced manufacturers down this path, but as they say, they could do in the future. Now, Qualcomm's response to this is actually for Quick Charge 4. Quick Charge 4 works side by side with USB power delivery. And what that means is that if you have a Quick Charge 4 charger and you plug it into a power delivery device, let's say like a Pixel, then the, the charger will recognize that it's not going to be using Quick Charge, it's a switch over to using power delivery. So it allows both systems to run side by side. And Qualcomm have done that in a hope that they can still sell their uh, Quick Charge technology to manufacturers but still kind of remain compliant so that when you use your charger for other devices, it's still able to deliver the right amount of uh, voltage and the right amount of current and devices still work without suddenly saying, oh no, this isn't quick charge, I'll just re resort back to 2.5 watts. So actually that's a, a pretty good move from Qualcomm. So in summary, basically we're now hopefully moving towards an era of a kind of a universal power supply a situation where USB power delivery can be used to power monitors, hard disks, laptops, charge up phones, and as long as you've got that USB-C type cable at both ends, then you'll be able to just sort of plug it in and the full amount of power will be able to be taken. And the good thing about uh, USB power delivery is the consumer doesn't need to worry about the voltages and the amps. As long as a uh, charger says, I support 45 watts, or this charger supports 18 watts, then the USB power delivery system can, can talk between the two to actually deliver the right amount of uh, voltage and, and amps. So basically, if you're buying a replacement charger, or you're at a friend's house and you want to plug in something, including even a laptop or even a, an external hard drive, as long as it's USB Type-C power delivery compliant and it's got the number of watts that you need from your original charger, then that spare charger, that replacement charger, that one you're borrowing will work exactly the same way. So that gives us this kind of universal power supply uh, uh, world, utopia that we're all looking for. Well, my name is Gary Sims for Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Please also subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Hit that bell icon so you get a notification whenever we release a new video. And last but not least, please go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.